Hi, I'm Cindy Gunter Baldo, and welcome to another edition of Llama's Love Lettering. If you haven't noticed, my camera's at kind of an odd angle today. I want to see if it is a little easier for you to see how I'm lettering by doing it at this weird angle. But if you're getting seasick or you just think it looks stupid, let me know. I'm This is all new to me. Anyway... Firstly, I'd like to make a couple of apologies. For one, I'm sorry this video took longer than usual to get released. I've been busy. And I remind myself that doing YouTube videos is not, I'm not like beholden to it, but I like making these and it's been a hell of a weekend. And so I just haven't had the chance to sit down and do it. Secondly, I'm so sorry that last week last video, I forgot Q and R in my rush to get done. I forgot to do Q and R. So I'm going to start it out today by showing you Q and R with the serif font that we worked on in the last video. Sorry. <laughs> and then I guess my third apology to you is that if my voice is kind of hoarse or if it goes out, I was at a wedding last night and there was a lot of journey played and I sang along with it because who wouldn't? So I'm sore and cranky and hungover slightly and my voice hurts. So, but I'm doing this, damn it. Uh, it's been long enough. Anyway, so this week we're going to work on this kind of font. It's very similar to the serif font that we worked on before, except this is a sans serif font. So you can tell I went to the wedding. Look at my pretty nails. I never do that. This is the same kind of font. It's just instead of um, with the serif on it, it's sans serif. Now, if you don't know what the difference between serif and sans serif is, I can't remember if we talked about it or not. We probably did, but hung over. Um, this little like that, that's a serif. You see how there's not one of those? On this, like, this is a sans serif letter. You add the serifs on, and now it's a serif letter. Get it? Anyway, so instead of doing the lined worksheets, because if I was going to be doing those this week, I swear to God, it would never have gotten done because I am just that tired. I just decided to do a sheet of the alphabet the way I do it to give you something to practice on. And we're going to kind of do what we did last week and just work on graph paper. Again, this is kind of taking your own printing and fancying it up a little bit. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to just write through each letter so you can see how I do it to give you kind of the idea. One of the things you'll notice, and I can kind of zoom in here. Let me see if I can do this without knocking the camera over. Zoom. Notice. I didn't fill the letters in all the way. I like that scribbly look. Let me see if I can zoom back out. Zoom back out. Woohoo! Back to normal. Um, I didn't fill them in all the way because I'm lazy for one. And for two, I like the scribbly look. It You get a little bit more... Um, a little bit more... Kind of room to screw up if you do the scribbly. Like you can you can get away with more mistakes if you do the scribbly rather than having everything look perfect. So I like to go with that one. But you can fill it in yourself solid if you want to. Anyway, so I'm just gonna get a piece of graph paper and I'm gonna work on this same way that I did the worksheet itself. And we're gonna start before I get into that sans serif. I'm going to start with the Q and the R with the serif. Okay? Actually, the Q and the R with the sans serif, and the, the Q, at least, with the sans serif and the serif kind of look similar to each other. But I do it kind of like this. You do the O, make the O face, like I said. When you get up back up to the top, you keep going. You just make kind of an oval on the inside. That's the way I do all of my O's in this style right? And then I just add a little tail with a little bubbly thing. And that's how I do uppercase Q with the with that serif styled font. For the lowercase Q, you kind of you draw your Q and then you do your your inside part of the Q. 
and then you add your serif and bring it down. And that's how I do lowercase q. I make it as easy as possible. I don't add a whole bunch of bells and whistles to it because cues are a pain in the ass and you don't have to do them very often. So you might as well not make it too hard on yourself. And for R's, now here's the thing. You can do this a couple of different ways where you don't want to fuck yourself up. Now you can, you do it this way and then just add the serif and you can go inside and add the bottom and then add here and then color it in because of that little fucker that's right there, right? Or you know, eventually you'll get better where you're not going to have to worry about that. And I usually just thicken this guy up a little bit to make it look kind of nice. Or you can make your R, add your like little, little thingy, add the serif and pull it out extra and then add the end on like that. It's crooked, but whatever. That's one way to do it without getting that little bastard right there. Sooner or later, you're gonna get used to it and then you're gonna be able to go like this. Just take your serif and leave yourself enough space. That just requires the muscle memory to know when to stop. Anyway, for the lowercase r, it's pretty simple. You draw your line, you add your serif and then go in like that. And then you just add the rest. See? Anyway, so there we go. The sad, sad letters that got misplaced this last time. So let's move on and see if I can manage to, uh, to do this without forgetting any letters. Okay. So for A, now this is because I'm filling them in with scribblies and I'm not trying to make them negative space. It's okay if you get those little bastards, the little lines that go inside. It's fine. Sooner or later, your muscle memory will kick in with this as well, and you won't have to worry about those. But for now, let's just do it kind of more colored in. So for A, you make your A. Now, the way most of these letters work, at least in my mind, is you make your letter. Remember to leave a little extra space because you're going to be fattening. Then pick a side and go with that side and add like a thickening and then just kind of scribble it full and there's your A. Lowercase a. Make it kind of bubbly and big. You draw your A. Same side. You just bring it down. It's really simple but it looks really cool especially I used it in my planner this week. I'll show you in, when I'm done with all of this. Um, B. Remember to make it a little extra a little extra bubbly. Drop it down. And that's the little bastard I'm talking about. Give it, a, give it a scribble. Now you'll notice, unlike with the serif font, um, I'm not doing both sides. If I was doing it like the serif font, I would fill it in here like this. And you can do that too. I'm just choosing not to because I kind of like this one side dealy. But you can do either. You can experiment with it however you want to. It's your writing and your planner. See? Just kind of drop it down. Drop it like it's hot. See why I love the scribbling? Very little effort, but it looks stylized. It's one of my favorite things in art is when you find something that is easy but looks like you spent time on it it's the great like the great um magician's tricks of the art world i had a i worked with someone once at the d same, same deal i worked with someone once who um was able to draw a bowl of cereal using just negative space she would just color in the shadows, color in, and you'd watch her do it. See how you did the, Z, the D there? You just leave it. Again, if you wanted to do both sides, you could go like that. That's not what I'm trying to do, though. The Ds that I was doing look like this. See? Anyway. Um, yeah, this lady I worked with could draw a bowl of cereal, and it would, when she was doing it, it looked like she was just scribbling like a little kid. But when it was done, it looked like the most awesome bowl of cereal ever. And she could do it in like 10 minutes. It was for like this, like a foot wide, two feet wide bowl of cereal. It was amazing. Anyway, E, 
Now you gotta be careful when you do E's and F's for these lines that come out. So like you can choose to make them all the same length. I usually don't. I usually stagger them a little bit. Maybe leave the little, one of them longer than the other or one of them shorter than the others. But you just gotta find a length that's right for you so it doesn't look awkward. And I found that if I draw the like column like this and then add these on, it always looks awkward to me. Like I don't like how that looks. I like to draw the whole E and then add the thickening. And that's my personal preference. You can make whatever choices you want to. And then with E here, you just make your E and then drop it down. Doing the one side's nice too. You just have to kind of get used to the interesting little thinness of the part that's not getting thickened. But I think it, especially if you do a lot of thickening on your cursive and with the serif type letters, um, you doing it this way kind of gives you a chance to mix it up and not have everything look like you're doing the same exact thing that's just mildly different. It's kind of cool to have some variety. So when I do F's, when I like strike through, I usually leave a little bit of extra room on the side so that it kind of looks even. You can always do that later too if you want to. And then G. Now there's a lot of different ways to do G. However you want to do G, just make your G how you want to make it and then do your drop down on the one side you've chosen to thicken. Now for the lowercase g, and I'm not even gonna go into the fancy, fancy squiggly one because I'm too tired for that. There's two ways that I've done it. One is where you bring it up around like that, like a usual kind of g, you know? And then I drop down here, and then because this curve right here is like in the same like zone I would drop down there too. So you can do it like that. That's not how I did it on the worksheet. How I did it on the worksheet was a way where you kind of avoid that situation by making your G and then having it kind of be abbreviated and then just drop down here. But you could do it either way, whichever way you like. This way looks kind of unfinished, but the whole font to me looks unfinished, so that kind of goes. But this is cute too. Your call, your planner. I say that a lot. I keep taking a lot of space today. Okay. One day I'm going to figure out a good filming situation, but not today. Okay. G, H. I'm not missing any letters today. H. Draw your H and then thicken one side. And then same here. Remember to make it a little extra poofy and then thicken one side. So since you've, I mean, I've been rambling a lot in this video and I think it's because no one, okay, like I said, I was rambling with the eye situation. I guess if it was going to be sans serif, I wouldn't have done these two serifs here, but I just don't like the eye by itself with no little things. It makes me think of an L. So I just do that to differentiate, but you could do it like this for uppercase I. Just draw a little rectangle. You do that too. I just don't like it that much. Same with the lowercase i. I don't do as big of a serif, but I do kind of similar. And again, if that bugs you that you have the serif, you could just do it this way. I just can't physically bring myself to do it like that. I, for some reason, I don't like that. Anyway, J. Again, I did the same thing. There's your J. Now you can add the serif, which is what I usually do, even in this font style. I just, I am, I am a rebel and I do what I want. And then with the J on the worksheet, I did it both ways. I did the unfinished way where you just sort of taper it off like that. Or you can do it the, the more finished way. And do it like that. Your call. I'm going to keep saying that. I keep saying that. God, I sound like I'm drunk. I didn't. I really didn't drink that much last night. It's making me regret even filming this video today. So I hope the haters aren't going to get me down. I'm not even sure if I have haters. Okay, K's a little brat. I I don't like K no matter what I do with it. But you can draw it out and then add your little 
your little thickening. Okay, let's fold this out. Okay, where are we at? K, L. Okay, so L, unlike the, the I and the J, I don't add the serif to the L. I just draw my L, and then I add my little, my little thickening to it. And then the thing I was saying about the I, the uppercase I, I do my lowercase L like that. Because I like that. I think that looks better. Whatever. You could also add the serifs onto it if you really want to, if you want to be a rebel. Now, M and W. We'll do M now and then W when we get there. M and W are the two uppercase letters where I break my own rule. Because I just don't like this. I don't like that. I think it looks really weird. I don't know why. So with upper, uppercase M, I will I will thicken the uh, the next side. Like I'll pick, and this still I drew these wrong. Let's try this again. I'm not happy with it. F uppercase M. I'm gonna fatten it here. Yeah, that works better. And then. There. And I like that a little bit better. You just gonna have to play with around with that because I'm never. I, there's always some letter that's like a little briat, briat, whatever. A little this is like a biatch and a brat at the same time, kind of like a gruel in Mean Girls. Now with the lowercase m, I usually leave it like this. That's why I did it that way on the worksheet. But you can also add this to continue the same kind of idea. Your call. And though I leave normal, I just do this, and then I thicken the one side and then lowercase n okay anyway I'm gonna move to another piece of paper because this is getting awkward okay oh now here's a big difference with the O. You saw how I did the Q. O, this here. Do your O. Now for the serif O, you would add it on both sides. But for the sans serif version, I was just doing this. I'm going to be like totally weak sauce with my coloring right now because I'm lazy. And then lowercase O is the same. Now there's a way with this that you can do it. You can either do... And this is kind of something that will go with all of your curved letters. C, O... D, whatever. You can curve it around like I did there, or you can just drop it. Depends on what effect you're going for. Oh, P. P is pretty self-explanatory. Now you're notice, you probably have noticed that sometimes I just bring it straight in and sometimes I kind of go around that line. It just depends on how I want the letter to look. It's something you just have to eyeball. Like, whatever you get comfortable doing. Then there's Q. You'll get comfortable doing it your own way. You know, whatever you think looks good to you. Okay, I'm covering all my crap up here. Uh, I'm still not used to this filming angle, so you can tell I am the queen of being a YouTube professional here, aren't I? Cause I'm not getting paid, so I guess I'm not technically a professional. Okay, so R, same deal as P. You just drop it down. And there you go. And then you can do it the same way where you draw the R and just thicken it. But I've just gotten so used to drawing that little rectangle that I do it without even thinking about it. Okay, S is kind of a fun one. Now, often when I draw an S, just a, right when I print an S, I go like this. And then if you thicken it, it kind of looks like that. And that's stupid looking. So no. No, we're not doing it like that. The way I do my S is for this specific font is I flatten my S's. I do them kind of like that. Uppercase, 
lowercase because then you can kind of find a starting spot and just sort of crap that looks like crap no whatever it looks like that that one looks kind of janky but whatever it's because I was watching the camera instead of my hand but if you flatten it like that then you can thicken the S and have it look a little bit more a little bit more like without looking like derpy okay okay T Remember what I said before about kind of lengthening the the strike through? Just remember to do, the, or just go back. Sorry, hiccups. Or just go back and thicken it later. Now U and V. I'll do my U's. Are nice and easy, and then you just scribble them in. And then V is the same. V. And then bring it in. And scribble it in. See how this one is probably a more simple one? The reason I didn't introduce this one before I did the serif one was because the concept of this one to me, the serif one makes more sense because it has the area to the W, by the way, um, I do the same thing as I do with the M. I break my own rule with the uppercase W. Anyway, like I was saying, with the serif version of this kind of thickening, because you have the serif like drawn there, it automatically gives you a spot to like thicken it up. It's not how I want you to do your W's. You can do them like this, but it's just demonstrating for the sake of argument. Um, the serif kind of gives you an idea of what you need to start doing. The sans serif, you got to kind of go on faith that it's going to look interesting. And it does. But like I said, it's your planner. You do it how you want to do it. X, just thicken one of the, the little X marks the spots. It's your planner. Nobody can tell you that you're doing it wrong because it's your shit. You just want to make sure it's something you can live with. You know, because you have to look at it. Unless you're drawing your planner and not actually looking at it, and then I'm not really sure what you're using your planner for. Okay. I've rambled my way through this. But I've forgotten Z, you say. No, I'm just saving Z for last because I freaking hate Z in every style of writing. So just draw a regular Z and a regular small Z, right? Now here... You can just pull it out at the end and thicken it. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you go at, in like that and then kind of in again. And that keeps you from pulling it out and have it be super awkward on one side. Anyway, that's C. So go ahead, practice these letters. Let me know how you like them. Let me know if this angle sucks ass because I can't really tell. I'm sorry that this was not a more interesting and informative video, but I really want to just curl up on the couch and watch Game of Thrones. Anyway, have a lovely evening, folks. I will hopefully see you on this next Friday, assuming that I don't get lazy again or have a busy weekend. Peace out, Girl Scouts.